Welcome to Heroic Lives. Today we're going to talk about St. Nicholas, the historic bishop from Mira in Turkey. St. Nicholas's feast day is December 6th, and while many of us associate him now with December 25th and Christmas, the historic figure is different, and we're going to get into his story today. We don't know a lot about him because he lived a long time ago. We don't even know the birth year of St. Nicholas. He may have been born in 345 or 352, perhaps somewhere in that range. He was born in Asia Minor, which we think of as Turkey today, in a little town called Parara in the province of Lycia. Back then it was a very different place. It was still part of the Roman, Eastern Roman Empire, uh, soon to be, and what would soon become the Byzantine Empire. It was an area that was still under Roman occupation and Christianity was still outlawed. One of the few things we know about St. Nicholas is that he made a pilgrimage. Records seem to indicate he went to the Holy Land, to Egypt, in that region, and upon his return was nominated a bishop. Being a bishop back then was quite difficult and dangerous, and it wasn't long after becoming a bishop that the Diocletian persecutions, some of the worst we know about, began to occur, and many bishops and Christians were arrested for not attesting to the Roman religions and for not forsaking their Christian faith. St. Nicholas was likewise imprisoned. We know that Nicholas was released from prison only after Constantine became emperor. When Constantine came to power, and he deserves perhaps his own video, he's not a saint in the Catholic Church, uh, but he does have some recognition in the Orthodox side of things. Uh, but Di but uh, after Diocletian's persecutions, Constantine won a battle, and he had a vision in that battle that is quite famous. And the vision was, with this sign, you will prevail. And he did. He won and was able to become emperor. And he made Christianity legal for the first time throughout the Roman Empire. And that was how Nicholas was released. It was shortly after this that a council was called the Council of Nicaea. One of the big issues at the time was the divinity of Christ. And I won't get into it too much, but the Arian heresy was alive and well, including Arius himself, who was spreading the heresy. And now that they could come out into the open and discuss it, uh, due to the legality of the religion, they did so. And Nicholas is listed as having been an attendant. There, are, there is a legend that he struck Arius at the council. I don't see any specific historic documentation of that. We don't even know if he spoke at all. But that is a story that I like to believe is true, telling that Arius that Christ was, of course, 100% God and 100% man, something that Arius disagreed with. The council approved that, and we also have the Nicene Creed that now affirms that as well. St. Nicholas was, despite our lack of knowledge of many of his deeds, really a... a St. Nicholas was, despite many of the lack of historic details that remain to us, beloved by the people of his area. He was the Bishop of Myra. There are many legends surrounding him, the most famous of which is the gold coins, and, or the sacks of gold coins, thrown into the window of a man who had three daughters, who was fearing that he had no dowry so they could be married, and that they were going to potentially become prostitutes or have some a very difficult life ahead of them. And he saved them that fate by paying a dowry so they could get married. Sometimes the legend says it was three nights in a row. I don't know the answer, and there probably is a grand truth to the story that he was charitable. And that is the very beginning of the modern day uh, December 25th connection. And in case you're watching with any kids and you don't want them to hear any further about it, I'm going to talk now a little bit about the connection between the historic St. Nicholas and uh, Santa Claus, so now would be a good time to turn it off for them. We don't get Santa Claus until really re recent history, and it comes through Europe. Um, Santa Claus was a Dutch term, and it came over to the United States through New Amsterdam, through New York. 
And those immigrants brought this idea of St. Nicholas giving gifts and is probably attached to the December 6th feast, but being so close to Christmas, the two were likely merged. Others saw it and really it wasn't until the last 100, 150 years that that took off in the United States as, as a cultural phenomenon and also spread to other parts of the world through really through the American connection. Santa Claus became Santa Claus and through modern media, through paintings, Norman Rockwell paintings, and just the development of culture, Santa Claus or Santa Claus, which is really Saint Nicholas, uh, has become a worldwide phenomenon. Though the connection is not obvious to many secular people today, it really does come down to Saint Nicholas. And you see many of the, the aspects of his clothing lining up with that of a Eastern Bishop. Uh, there are some great videos and resources on that, but it's very clear that that's where that comes from. I would encourage you that on December 6th to celebrate the feast day that the church celebrates. It is St. Nicholas's feast day. He is said to have died on December 6th, and he is a great saint. In fact, he is a patron of so many things I'm not even going to list it. One of the most famous is of sailors. Perhaps that connection comes from the fact that sailors stole his relics. Uh, during the First Crusade, he was so popular that Italians, sailors, uh, snuck in and stole some of the relics from his sarcophagus and brought them back to Bari, Italy. That's why he's also called Nicholas of Bari. So part of, part of his relics are in Italy, part of them are still in the original uh, tomb, and there is still such a following of his and such a devotion to him Every year they're said to be Nicholas water or myrrh, uh, it's a miracle um, substance of some kind for healing and that emerges from the bones of St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is a patron of sailors, brewers, and others. Uh, is, is so famous that he's often called Nicholas the wonder worker. And I think we should come back to him as a saint whose intercession we should seek and who we should give honor to just as we give to the other saints. So on this December 6, I encourage you to celebrate that um, because we have a German tradition in this house as well. We will be placing for our children um, their shoes out and plates and they'll get some chocolate and a book on that day. And I think that's a fun way to make it an exciting way to remember St. Nicholas, who was a bishop during great persecution and who was fortunate enough to have survived that persecution, been released from prison, and to emerge in a time when the church was trying to define its doctrines and define the divinity of Christ once and for all. Saint Nicholas, pray for us.